Lesson 3. What materials are best at reflecting or absorbing infrared radiation? Okay, things to remember about this lesson. Uh, one, if it's got a red star, information you need to take notes on. If it's got a yellow circle, something new for us this lesson, um, it's information for you that you'll be useful. There are some questions on this, so you will need to pay attention to it, but you don't need the notes for it. And three, the blue box um, basically are questions that you need to answer. Okay, that also shows up on the answers as well. Remember to turn your phone off, um, collect a pen, pencil, paper to help you with this work. And remember to complete the assessment on the Google Forms when you have completed this lesson. And that basically means that you complete it after you've gone through this slideshow and listened to this video. Okay, here are remember questions. So at this point, you probably want to pause the video and just complete the questions. Welcome back. Let's now go through the answers. So number one, wave speed equals frequency times and it should be wavelength and not just wave. So you have a length here missing. Don't forget to write it in. Number two, the unit of frequency is the Hertz, uh, HZ. It's a fundamental unit. You do need to know this. Um, a type of longitudinal waves is sound waves. Number four, the um, electromagnetic spectrum is radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet light, X-rays and gamma rays. And I've set it out in um, from lowest frequency and longest wavelength to highest frequency and shortest wavelength. And the three parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that are ionizing are ultraviolet, X-rays and gamma rays. And this was covered in an earlier lesson. But do remember that these three are ionizing and can cause damage to uh, living tissue. Okay, Ultraviolet radiation can cause skin cancer and the other two can cause cancer within the body. Okay, so let's start the lesson properly. So we're looking at infrared radiation. So what are infrared waves? Basically, they are um, part of the electromagnetic spectrum that comes between radio waves and microwaves. Okay, it has a heating effect only. All right, and these are the notes that you will re require. Um, this bit at the bottom here, where my red pointer is at the moment, is really just for reference. But you do need to know which part of the electromagnetic spectrum it is, and that it comes between microwaves and visible light. So you may wish to stop the video at this point and just make sure you have the notes. Okay, so how is infrared waves produced? If you read through the notes, you will find that all objects produce infrared. The only time that objects don't produce infrared radiation is when there are actually absolute zero. But apart from that, every object produce some form of infrared depending on the amount. So a hotter an object is, the more infrared radiation it produces. And you'll get to a point of where if it is hot enough, it won't just produce infrared radiation, it will also produce visible light. And that's why objects start to glow red hot. Um, and then if they get hotter and hotter, they go white hot and then blue is the final and hottest color. But you won't see it that on on the earth, okay, mainly red, and you might see white in places like steelworks and and um, iron foundries and places like that. Okay, 
so an object is um, so if we read just off the text here you may wish to stop the presentation right now and just read through the notes and um, take some summaries okay welcome back so the little bit at the bottom in the darker blue box is basically how um, infrared radiation is detected they use special cameras and a thermogram um, shows an object with different uh, temperatures um, you sometimes see these on programs like police camera action when they're chasing somebody in a, a stolen car and you can see the wheels are white hot and you can see the bonnet's white hot and it's leaving like a trail on the road and that's because what they're doing is they're actually shining an infrared camera on the car and everything else looks that's colder looks um, darker colors and then you've got this car that's illuminated and sometimes you can also see where the criminals have hidden when they run away from the car and occasionally what they do is they hide in a in a wheelie bin and um, that lights up white as well it's like oh spot where the criminal's gone yes it's hiding in the wheelie bin and that's all due to infrared radiation and um, one of a uh, special camera and one of these thermograms okay so you, here are some um, uh, diagrams of different types of um, infrared radiation um, and it's basically see how many you can spot so if you stop the video at this point write a list of um, the number of um, detectors, the number of uses that you can see, and then we'll go through some of them. Okay, let's now go through the answers for this section. So, um, heating. See the radiators on the left hand, left hand side of the wall. Um, radiators give off infrared radiation. Any hot object will give off infrared radiation. Uh, cooking. See the barbecue on the patio. Um, if you put your hand above a, a above a, um, a cooker, you can feel the heat being given off. You can't see it, but you can feel it, and that's because it's infrared radiation. It has a heating effect. Uh, TV remote. Um, infrared radiation um, covers a reasonably wide band of frequencies and the frequencies at the lower end of infrared um, can be used for um, remote control safely. You won't feel um, those. They don't have a particularly high heating effect. Um, you can turn things over quite easily and uh, send messages with it between your fellow vision and your remote and you put your hand in front of it and it will do you no harm whatsoever okay digital thermometer um, that can be used um, for measuring the temperature of people it measures the temperature in the ear uh, motion sensors um, and security lights and alarms um, if you look round. Um, some houses or you look around the school you will find these little white boxes in the corner they are basically infrared motion sensors and they either turn the lights on or set off an alarm or notify somebody's walking about but basically that's that's their job and we quite a lot of us have these security lights that turn themselves on and off when you walk by and those are basically infrared um, sensors. They are called PIR sensors, passive infrared um, detectors, and basically their job is to turn the light on when they sense something um, hot, in other words us or uh, an animal that's going by. Um, the classic is that the security light that keeps turning itself on and off every time the cat goes by. So. Um, they're all triggered by um, animals or, or, or people that are walking by. Okay, cameras used by the fire service to detect people uh, inside buildings. Um, what they do is, if they have a collapsed building, they can hold um, a thermal imaging camera and they can actually detect objects because we are hotter than the background. Um, they can detect people that are alive in the building. 
um, and then they can dig them out. And last but not least, as I was mentioning earlier, cameras used on police um, helicopters to detect uh, criminals um, undercover. Also things like the, the military use them as well. Um, infrared detectors, they also use passive um, devices as well, um, which we won't go into here, but um, infrared detectors are used as well by the military. Okay, so this is um, a slide that is just requiring you to be aware of. So the infrared radiation is emitted by the sun, okay. Um, radiators, solid fuel fires, electrical fires um, is used for heating. The heating effect of infrared radiation is detected by the temperature sensitive nerve endings in your skin. So you have detectors in your skin that detect uh, a temperature change. So if you put your hand on something hot, they will detect it. Some people, interestingly, don't actually have that um, and they, they can put their hands on hot things and they burn themselves without realizing they put their hands on. Um, so um, it's quite useful to have those, those nerve endings that basically tell your brain and your body, ow, that's hot, get your hand out of the way. Uh, grills, cookers, toasters, campfires, barbecues, uh, use infrared radiation to cook, cook food. And you can you can tell that because you put your hand above, say, a barbecue, you can feel that intense heat coming off the coals um, and it cooks your food without touching it. Um, that's the infrared radiation. Infrared waves are emitted by the heating elements or lit fuel and absorbed by the surface of the food. And that's why you get um, cooked chicken and not raw chicken, which would be a bad thing. Um, heat is transferred through the food by conduction so it strikes the, the infrared radiation strikes the outside of the chicken and then what happens is that the um, the heat is transferred by conduction in other words the particles vibrating backwards and forwards because heat basically is how fast your particles are moving inside your object Okay, here we go. We've still got another yellow circle here, so this is just for information. How is the infrared used in remote controls? So, not all infrared radiation is thermal. Infrared radiation with short wavelengths are not hot and cannot, cannot be detected by the skin. This is what we were talking about a moment ago. This type of radiation is used by remote controls to send information through the air over short distances. And in fact, there is a limited distance that your um, remote control will work over. It's quite fun to see how far that is. Um, the pulse of, of infrared radiation from the remote control can only travel in straight lines um, to the de detector being controlled. Um, Try using a mirror and see whether that works. Infrared waves uh, can also be used to transmit information through optical fibers. And optical fibers, they can go a very long way. Um, and basically the reason that is is because none of the energy is lost um, from the original signal. And then it could go for, for hundreds of miles and when the image when the signal starts to become poor which it does eventually um they put a they have a booster in there that regenerates the signal and then sends it on again um so your internet and your cable tv works fine uh, can send data over long distances and round corners okay another yellow spot in the corner so this is for information as well how do infrared thermometers, infrared thermometers work? An infrared thermometer is able, um, enables remote sensing of temperature. It does this by um, detecting the infrared radiation emitted by an object, in other words, you, and converted it into temperature. Um, you've got, at the moment, with the current conditions, you now have those thermal, you now have those thermal, um, thermometers that people just hold in front of you and it gives them a reading 
Um, those are infrared um, thermometers and that you have those thermal cameras as well detecting whether somebody has a fever when they get off the plane or off the train or even coming into places like schools. Um, the eardrum is an accurate point of measuring uh, the body's temperature because it's deep within the head um, and basically you've probably all had them they have like a little cone thing on the on the front um, they pick the little cone up and they put it in your ear they read the temperature and then they flick the cone into the bin and move on to the next person a digital ear thermometer can do uh, this without touching uh, the eardrum which is which is very fragile the probe is inserted into the canal and then uh, measures the infrared radiation emitted from the eardrum and throughout the tissues. In other words, you pop it in the ear and um, it reads how much infrared is given off and then that is converted into a, uh, a number on a temperature scale. And hopefully we're all healthy. Okay, so we've now got another yellow dot. So this is how um, infrared waves fight crime. So um, on this one, I'm going to um, not talk through this one because I've talked through this quite a bit already. Um, so if you would like to stop the video at this point and just read through this slide. Okay. Okay, and something else that's um, worth having a look at, there are some excellent YouTube videos on people being chased in cars um, at night by police helicopters. Um, if you've got a spare five minutes, it might be worth researching some of these. Okay, answers, answers for these questions are taken from all of the slides that are shown. So these also include the ones with the yellow dot okay so you didn't need to take notes from them but you just simply needed to be ref you may need to refer to them so number one true or false infrared radiation is ionizing number two is infrared uh, visible to humans okay number three on a thermogram what is the color that shows the hottest temperature number four give the names of two uses of infrared at number five, who discovered infrared radiation? Okay, so you, we want to pause the video at this point and just complete those questions. Okay, welcome back and let's just go through the answers. So number one, infrared radiation is not ionizing. It only has a heating effect and that's because it's, it's on the lower frequency side of uh, visible light. Number two, infrared is not visible to humans. Okay. Uh, number three, the color that is shown the hottest temperature on a thermogram is white. And this is related to the one we've got on here. Some thermograms will may have slightly different colors, but the one that we've got is white. Number four, so uh, two uses of infrared radiation are uh, thermal energy and equipment um, used by the police, uh, digital ear thermometers um, used by ho in hospitals. You could have had um, PIRs, you could have had a toaster, you could have had a cooker. Any of those are uses of infrared radiation. And number five, Sir William Herschel um, is credit credited with the discovery of infrared radiation. Okay, so what you're now going to do is you're now going to have a look at a little practical. And in the center of this slide, you have a table. You have um, surfaces. So you have dull, matte, rough, and underneath you have shiny. You have absorption and you have emission. So it says dull, matte, and rough, uh, good absorbers of infrared radiation. Um, and also good emitters of uh, infrared radiation. Silver are both poor absorbers and emitters. The practical to do, uh, to confirm the results in the table, carry out, carry out the practical on the slide 15 of the slideshow. So let's have a look. So here we go. 
The protocol is to prove that the information in the table is correct. Consider how you can you can measure the temperature change. So what you're going to do is that you're going to require um, two glass um, two glasses. You're going to require a material that is dark and matte. Okay, and you're going to require a silver material as well. And you may want to consider things like how you measure the temperature. You may, if you have a bathroom temperature uh, probe, you may want to use that. Or it may be that you just have to um, dunk your finger in it and see which one is the warmest. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to wrap uh, one glass with the, the black or, or dark material, making sure you've covered it completely and you're going to wrap the other one in the silvery material, probably silver foil, and you're going to then leave them outside, hopefully on a sunny day, okay, for about an hour to, to three hours. So it's, the longer the better. And basically what you should find is that over a period of time, that the object that is um, black, and matte will absorb more of the energy and therefore transfer it to the water. And um, if you test then test the silver one, you will find that the temperature is, is less than the one that's in black paper. Okay, so it's worth having a go at this and, and seeing whether you get it. You may wish if you've got opportunity for this is to have a white can and a black can um, things like monster for instance if you drink that stuff um, or cans where you've just wrapped some black material around them may work better than the glasses okay so your results you need to consider your results so you compare your um, results with the results in the table write a short conclusion and that should basically say state what you found out did your, did your results compare with the table? Um, were the results the same or different? And if so, why so? Uh, things to consider when writing your conclusion. How can, how can you tell which material was the best at absorbing infrared radiation? Which thing is, is about the material makes it the best? Uh, B, why did, why did you use a, a glass with uh, no material on it? In fact, you can do this. Um, and why would you? Why would you use a glass with no material on it? Something to think about. Um, C, uh, what properties of the material uh, make it so good? So you need to consider why the, why the material basically had that result. Why was it warmer if it was? Why was it colder if it was? All right, so what you should have taken away from this lesson and what you should have found out when you're doing your practical is the following. Black matte materials are the best absorbers and emitters of infrared radiation. Shiny surfaces are the worst absorber and emitters of infrared radiation. And an example of the fact of this fact, sorry, is that thermos flasks on the whole have a shiny inside and that's because what they're trying to do is reflect the infrared radiation. Okay, what you need to do now is you need to do the assessment which is on the Google Forms as usual and um, that relates to this lesson. Thank you for watching.